so uh, good evening everyone so today i am going to uh, tell you about some basics of docker so uh, all you all of you are aware about the doc, uh, docker or any basic idea like what uh, tool a docker is anyone yes okay so uh, let me give you a brief introduction uh, so docker is a basically a containerization tool so which is used to deploy and manage our applications so by containerization we mean that uh, 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 it gives the environment uh, the respected environment to a particular application which that application requires to run so uh, then the question arises that why uh, we require this particular uh, docker software only so what happened earlier in earlier stages uh, what we were practicing we were like uh, uh, establishing a machine a windows machine a linux machine and uh, deploying an application there like installing the application there and uh, installing all the necessary dependent de dependencies and then running our application there only uh, uh, in the earlier days so this was very you know unscalable and not a good practice and it was not able to um, by using this approach we were not able to uh, manage our applications suppose if number of applications increases then this uh, uh, process of uh, deploying directly on the machine or any server it was uh, really unscalable so after this the concept of uh, virtual machines was uh, introduced so how many of you are uh, aware about the concept of virtual machines anyone okay i'll i'll explain so what happened so uh, earlier what we were doing we were directly deploying our application over the bare metal uh, application or machine directly on the either the laptop or a window machine so uh, so after that what we have evolved we were we started using uh, some of the software which which are called hypervisors so what hypervisors did they created a layer between uh, our hardware of uh, hardware of our system and to the machines virtual machines that we are going to create so virtual machines are created like uh, if we if i am using a window machine and i want to create uh, another machine on that particular machine uh, let's say ubuntu machine so what i'll do i'll download the iso file of that particular uh, operating system and using various uh, hypervisors so when i come to hypervisors there are two type of hy hypervisors so uh, most of you are going uh, should be using windows so when you uh, uh, activate the administrator administrator privileges to your windows you will see something like hyper v when you search uh, on the windows machine you will uh, you search this hyper v so it is a hypervisor which uh, microsoft serves by default so what this hypervisor does it allocates the resources of our uh, windows machine to this particular machine so what happens when we create a virtual machine suppose uh, my system is uh, my, my system ram is 16 gb so i want to create two windows virtual machines on my on my host machine so what i'll do i will download the iso file for that particular uh, operating system and using uh, various uh, hypervisors so for windows uh, it is hyper v and and i am using ubuntu so i will uh, download type 2 hypervisors which are services offered by other companies so uh, you may have also heard a, uh, another name vmware so vmware is a software which is used to create virtual machines using hyper uh, using iso files so what i'll do i'll uh, download the iso file for my windows operating system and will create uh, two virtual machines of windows operating system and while creating the virtual machines we specify the amount of ram and storage which we are going to provide to those virtual machines so that storage and ram 
comes from our hardware only our hold host machines hardware only so this process is feasible up to like one or two applications or we can say monolithic applica- applications like we have to deploy only one backend and one frontend so this was feasible up to this point only because if we increase the number of applications so managing them will be difficult first of all and second of all uh, our hardware will not be able to cope up uh, cope up because it has to run virtual machines also and it also has to run uh, its all, uh, own processes as well so this uh, process of uh, deploying applications over virtual machines was feasible up to monolithic architecture so as you all uh, might be aware about the microservices architecture and uh, it is currently being widely used in all the backend processes so here comes the need of docker so what docker basically does docker uh, so uh, from the word itself you can understand uh, it means docker a uh, container so what a container if i go to this particular image so you see containers so we can put anything inside container anything means anything like if we want to put uh, you know these cargo ships uh, you you might have seen cargo ships so inside containers we can put anything like cars or furniture anything we want to ship from here to there we use cargo machines in these containers and inside the containers we can put anything so same comes to our uh, uh, in the deployment process so uh, what we do in uh, using docker we write some docker files i'll explain what docker files docker images are uh, in this session so uh, in docker we write docker files and uh, with the help of docker file we create image so in docker file we mention all the necessary uh, dependencies which are uh, required for our application to run like uh, we can also mention the operating system and we can also all the uh, environments like node js environment and all that so uh, we set up a environment using a file we write docker file and from that docker file we write uh, we uh, create an image and from that image we create the container so i'll uh, share you i'll share my screen this architecture so what happens uh, docker also has its registry or we call it docker hub so what happens in docker hub like suppose i am a developer and i created an application and uh, it is a generalized application like anyone can use it for basic uh, let's let's say authentication module so i created an authentication module and uh, i created the image for that particular uh, for particular application and i pushed it into docker hub so uh, now it is on the docker regi- docker hub registry so what uh, what happens anyone can uh, download that image and uh, run it using uh, docker uh, docker run command and uh, what will happen the container will run and uh, that person is going to use my application even without doing a single bit of code that uh, code is already there he is running the container he is going to expose the container to outside world and he will use it so the question arises like why why docker we were using virtual machines and we were using virtual machines and why are we using docker so the uh, so the first point is like Uh, docker that virtual machines uh, i told you like it utilizes uh, most of the resources of our host machine and the virtual machine sizes are also very high like because the iso file which we are going to download it will take like around uh, the ubuntu iso file is around 2. or 2. 2.5 or 3 gbs so iso file and after iso file we are going to uh, apply some ram also and storage also so it will take the uh, it will consume the resources of the host machine while on the other hand the uh, size of a docker comp- container is in mbs like if we uh, uh, survey a react app using nginx the size of the container is around like 10 to 15 mb only and the utilization of the host machine is very less 
and we can uh, ship docker uh, container using docker images anywhere if i want to share my application with you i can simply create the image and you can uh, directly run the container using that particular image okay so this is the like uh, basic uh, overview like why are we using docker and why we are not using vm bears okay there is there is a small representation like there was always a uh, you know a saying from the developer side like it uh, works fine on my local machine ki mere local host pe to sahi chal raha hai to this uh, docker also resolved that issue because we can create the exact same uh, environment from the uh, from uh, on which that developer is working so uh, this also solved that particular issue so that's that's all about like that's all the theoretical part uh, that's really much it i'll uh, i'll now uh, go to the you know instance and uh, we'll show you some uh, basic docker commands you can read this ppt uh, you know in the you know after this session or anything so so this is the i created this instance on aws for the demo purposes okay so so uh, are you able to see my screen or uh, should i zoom a bit or more hello yeah we are able to so and if uh, anyone is having any doubt till yet no okay so uh, docker desktop is also available for windows but i will uh, really suggest any everyone to uh, try learning linux command basic linux command and uh, try to use docker on uh, linux as well because most of these servers which are created worldwide are linux servers windows servers are also created but mostly linux servers are created and docker tool is itself created uh, by keeping in mind the linux architecture so it will be good if you use linux uh, docker on linux okay so for installing docker uh, on a linux machine you have to run the command apt get docker dot io and you can put hyphen y flag to uh, it will ask for a for your permission that if you want to install it it will take your disk space so you can put hyphen y here to uh, by default take yes for that particular prompt apt get install okay so it is installed now so if you run now run the command docker hyphen hyphen help so you will see all the basic commands which we use with docker and all the uses of it so you can also uh, see like what which command is used for which particular purpose and also i I'll, also i'll also tell you like basic commands which we use while uh, creating a image while creating a container deleting a container i'll tell you all those commands as well so uh, so from uh, initially i'll pull an nginx image from our uh, from docker hub and i will create an nginx container okay so uh, the command for pulling the image from docker hub is docker pull nginx the name of the image so i already know the name of the image that's why i directly entered it uh, so if you don't know the name of the image you can go to docker hub and uh, search for the name of the image you are looking for so if i hit enter we can also specify versions after this particular command by default it will pick up the latest image latest version okay so the image is now uh, Uh, downloaded so after pulling the image we want to see like 
uh, where uh, what is the name of the image like details about the image so to check all the images on my host machine i have to run the command docker images so it will show me uh, the name of the image tag uh, means like what is the tag associated with that particular image image id and created 6 days ago size 142 mb so by created 6 days ago it means the developer which are maintaining the docker hub repository for nginx they have pushed their last update 6 uh, days ago so by created 6 days ago it means this so now i have the image so if i want to run uh, a container using this image so i have to uh, write the command docker run so from uh, uh, on this point i'll uh, you will get to know two additional uh, things about docker so first of all i'll run the uh, interactive mode so interactive mode means when i run this particular command i will directly go in inside the docker container that in jdx container so if i run uh, dog if i write here hyphen it hyphen it here means uh, the interactive mode and then i will name the insta- name this container test 1 and these are the flags which you can uh, search over the internet like docker uh, attributes docker run attributes your docker command options run command options so you will you can see the list of all the attributes that you can uh, pass while cre- creating the container so we have run uh, hyphen it uh, for interactive mode hyphen hyphen name to set the name of the container and after this i will uh, mention hyphen p so here comes another good part uh, this part is called port forwarding so what uh, i will uh, ma- write this 8080 here so what does this 8080 means this side uh, on the right side this means the port inside the container inside the container our application is running on 80 port and i want to map that application running on 80 port to the uh, uh, port 80 on my local host this host machine okay so the uh, right hand side port is the port inside the container and the left hand side uh, port is the host machine port the local host port okay and then at last we will uh, write the image name which we have downloaded so as you can see we have directly uh, come inside the our nginx container so we can do like nginx container is started so there is nothing you right now to do much in, inside the nginx container so we, uh, we will directly uh, exit this container okay so now another command so so now our container we are out of out of our container and it is stopped so uh, if like, like if if i am a new person i as and i ssh into this particular instance and i want to see like how many containers are running on this particular instance so what i what i will do what is the command for that so i will uh, write the command docker ps so but it is it is not showing anything so why it is not showing anything because our container is stopped and this ps command shows only the running containers to list all the containers i have to apply hyphen a flag so it will show me the exited containers who are all, uh, all the containers which are running and which are stopped so this is the command to check uh, all the running containers running as well as, as well as stopped containers so now i want to remove this container because it is stopped and it is no use it is for no use so for deleting or you can say removing unused images and unused containers from our host machine the command is docker system prune hyphen f hyphen f is for forced and it means don't ask me before deleting delete deleting them directly delete them if i hit enter so it will tell me like total reclaimed spaces this much so so this is the interactive mode which i told you 
so uh, keeping the entire command same if i come back here and instead of hyphen it i write d here and hyphen d means detach mode detach mode that means it will run in the background so this is the uh, like container it shows the container is created so if i run now docker ps hyphen a so i'll see my nginx container image that i have used is nginx and the name is test name and my port the port 80 of my local host is mapped to the port 80 of that particular container inside the container okay so now my container is running in uh, detached mode so so what if i want to go inside the container now so for that i have to write the command docker exec hyphen it again hyphen it it is for interactive mode and now the container id i can copy the container id and paste here or i even i can mention the uh, container name and slash pin slash bash to open the bash shell if i ls here i will see all the files inside the, my nginx container so i can do any operation from here so uh, if i exit from the container so again my container is running here so any doubt till this point anyone sir ek question pooch raha hu batao jo docker hai ek cdn ki tarah work karta hai kya nahi nahi it is a service software service okay hmm. for for windows it is available as a docker desktop service a software provider or uh, in linux operating system it is uh, available in apt and yum package manager as a service <clears throat> anyone else Okay. Okay, so Nginx also uh, has a welcome page. So whenever we install Nginx and uh, open the Nginx uh, to outside world or to port eighty, so there is a welcome HTML page. So let's try and open. So now uh, my container port eighty is mapped to my local host port eighty, and the the IP for a particular instance is directly mapped to the port eighty. so if i hit the ip of this particular instance public ip it should show me the uh, uh, welcome to nginx page welcome to nginx html page so if i go to uh, security groups here and open port 80 for public access see it is uh, showing a uh, welcome to nginx to me and we have we are running uh, nginx even without installing it on our host system directly on our own host system so if we see like docker stats this command is used to check like what uh, amount of memory uh, our containers are using so if i run docker stats here see so it is using only 0.07 a uh, percentage of memory of uh, of my host machine and if we have to do this using virtual machines so suppose if i am a uh, in the, if i am a windows user i had to first install vmware then download the iso file then start the virtual machine a lot ram to it a lot storage to it then i can uh, install nginx over ubuntu server so it is a very tiring and uh, time taking process and also not a scalable process so here only uh, with few commands we are able to install nginx uh, in a in a we are uh, able to run nginx inside a container without even directly installing it on in, a, in our host machine so that's the advantage 
for uh, uh, containerizing an application or any solution. So uh, now you will say like uh, this container is running. If I want to stop this container, so for that you can uh, run the command docker stop and you can even uh, you can copy the container ID and paste it here or you can mention the name of the container test one. So it will stop the container and again for deleting again docker system prune hyphen f okay so there is uh, not any container running right now okay so now i will so i talked about a docker file and what a docker file is and how can we create images from docker file so this was like uh, images present on the docker hub and we can directly pull it from here and then use it suppose uh, i have i am working on a node.js project and we are not able to uh, you know uh, that images images for our uh, requirement is not present on docker hub then we have to write our own code and run a container for that particular application so in that case what we will do because docker image is not present on uh, our docker hub so in that case we will write our uh, docker file and create our own image for our application so what we, so i have cloned a, a demo node.js application that i have created for this so i have cloned it already to save some time so if what if, if i look here so it contains a docker file uh, uh, ignore this uh, docker compose.yml because docker compose is a tool which is used to manage docker containers so suppose if we are running uh, 35 to 4, 40 containers on my host machine to manage all those uh, containers docker compose is another tool which docker provides to uh, orchestrate or manage our containers so it is an advanced docker concept but today we are only focusing on the basics of docker so we are going to skip docker compose today there are many advanced concepts in docker uh, like docker networks docker volumes so we can discuss it in some other session today we are going to focus on the basics part so this contains my index.js file if i uh, show the contents of index.js file it basically initiates a express server and sends a response hello and port is 3000 for this particular application. So if I if we look at the contents of our Docker file, so we see a few steps are here. So uh, in my PPT, I have mentioned the contents of a Docker file. You can uh, check, uh, check out this uh, slide later. So uh, I'll explain what does what does this mean. So from uh, from this uh, using this from keyword in Docker file, we can mention the environment of our part for our particular application. So here it is a Node.js application. So we only require Node Node environment. So we have mentioned here as Node as builder. So uh, as builder here is a variable. So we can use this variable for uh, writing multi-level docker files that is also an advanced concept for docker for docker uh, so we will first here simply we will mention the version of the node which we want to set as the environment so here i will mention node 14 node version 14 so from using this from keyword in uh, docker we specify the environment for our application initial environment. So we can use multiple uh, from statements in a Docker file. So like before this from statement, we can also use another from statement. Uh, if I don't want to run this on our Ubuntu environment uh, or Windows environment, so I can mention the operating system as well at the beginning of the Docker file. Okay, so using from, we specify the environment, operating system or any other environment. So this work directory uh, keyword, what this does. So it creates, uh, like I have mentioned slash app. So a work directory means, work dir means work directory. 
so it is going to create a directory inside uh, our container this slash app and all the files which are uh, going to copy and all the operations regarding our application which are going to run will run in this particular directory so it is totally depends upon the person so if i if i don't want my file to be you know in a structured way i can simply write dot here and all my files will be you know scattered at the root level so if you want to if you want your files to be uh, you know in a structured way in a particular folder so you can mention the work directory here so i uh, i specified the uh, work directory here so uh, again, uh, next this copy <coughs> sorry this copy element here so what this does this copy statement copies file from our current working directory where my docker file is stored it copies file from this directory to the work directory which i have specified in my docker file or we can say it copies file from my host machine to uh, my docker container and this again next run command run keyword in docker file so it is used to run various commands while uh, starting our application so suppose uh, this is a uh, node js application so after copying the package dot json inside a container what do we have to do we have to run npm install to install all the uh, uh, node modules or dependencies so that's that uh, this is why run command is used so in various uh, applications which use sqlize or uh, sqlize or any other databases so we have to run migrations also so we can also mention that migrations command here there are many commands which are required uh, before an application to start so we can mention those commands by using run and this again copy command it is used to copy the files from host machine to the to our uh, container and by dot here means every file uh, every file which is present in the uh, our root directory on the host machine and this cmd command it is used to run the command which is uh, required to run our application so like for npm start all the uh, backend developers here node js developers might be aware about like npm start nodemon index.js so these commands are used to run our node js application so this is so i'll again i'll tell you the flow for this particular docker file like what is happening so i have initially uh, uh, set node js 14th version as my environment for this particular container i have created a work directory slash app here and then i have copied package.json to this particular directory slash app then i have installed all the dependencies or node modules for this particular application and then i copied the remaining files over this particular uh, directory so you guys might be asking like package.json is already copied to the this working directory and again if i copy all the files to this so package package.json will be copied twice so that is what is that docker is smart enough so if the file is already present inside that particular working directory so it will not copy the file again and now again let uh, the last command npm start so it will run our application so if we come out Uh, of this particular docker file so now what we now we don't have the image we only have the docker file so what we will do we will now create an image from this docker file so to create an image from the docker file we run the command docker build hyphen t hyphen t is uh, to tag this image or give a name to this image so we will give the uh, name of the image test2 and here we specify the uh, this dot this dot means the current working directory to specify that my docker file is in current directory and if i hit enter so it will show me all the processes which are currently happening while running the docker file so step 1 is happening it is downloading the node js 14th version
no steps second it is creating the directory step 3 it copied the package.json to my working directory now it is running the npm install okay now it uh, all the steps are completed it co copied and so now my image is ready so if i run the command docker images so my image is created test two okay so now my image i have the image now i want to run a container using this image so for running a container what was the command docker run hyphen d we want to run this uh, command in a you know in detachment run this kind yeah in the detachment so docker run hyphen d and i will name this container as test test node now i will specify my port port forwarding or port mapping so the application inside my container will run on port number 3000 okay so i will write uh, i on my localhost i will also uh, map it to uh, 3000 and at last i will uh, mention the image name and if i run this command my container is created and if i see docker psa my application is running okay and if i go to my aws account and if i go to my security groups and open port 3000 for public access so it has sent me the response uh, hello so this is how we basically deploy our application using docker so any this might be any application docker uh, node js python uh, python flask api fast api react angular static html css any application apart from the mobile application <laughs> poor joke so yeah that's that's it i'll i'll share the ppt uh, so you can uh read from this and i will also share a cheat sheet for all the docker commands which are required to run a container uh, build an image delete an image and all that so that's it if anyone is having any doubt you can ask questions yes divyam sir i have one, question. one more doubt okay yeah yeah you can ask you can ask. okay so my doubt is if we need to connect nginx with uh, uh, react build then how can yes, we do yes. uh, that so for that like particular i am running yeah, npm yes. start command and i am able to connect with uh, that server using port but mm -hmm. i am not able to connect that server using nginx only nginx is uh, saying welcome to nginx so what happens so what you, in this case what you will do uh, that thing which i uh, mentioned here multi part uh, multi level docker files so on the that first is, part mm -hmm. on the from the first like part level, docker file is created i have created nginx file docker file also but okay. the issue is i am not able to connect with that uh, build with nginx image okay so uh, so are you are you passing any uh, custom nginx configuration from your uh, root directory yeah i am passing that so uh, so i guess the naming uh, convention for that particular html file slash var slash w slash html so there might be something wrong between that uh, particular configuration configuration file one, one more issue uh, i was getting an error of the file directory i think something forbidden error okay uh, uh, so while creating project. so so are you uh, running are you, are you running that particular docker daemon as a, a root user or any other user uh, as any normal user 
सो वाइल क्रिएट वाइल रनिंग दी इमेजेस एंड वाइल रनिंग दी कंटेनर्स ट्राई रनिंग यूजिंग सूडो कमांड बिकॉज वट सूडो प्रिवेज विल डू इट विल अलाउ दी डॉक्टर डेमिन टू क्रिएट फाइल इन साइड दी कंटेनर सो वॉट इज हैिंग लाइक वेन यू आर हिटिंग दी फाइल इट इज नॉट हैविंग दी परमिशन टू एक्सेस दी फोल्डर सो ट्राई क्रिएटिंग दी फाइल यूजिंग दी सूडो प्रिवेज I have created the all the files using sudo privileges only. Without sudo, I was not able to connect with Docker. Okay. So I, I guess we have to look for this issue over another call. First, tell me. Yeah. Okay, you can go ahead. Yeah, Neeraj. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Uh, yeah, Divyam sir, I have one question. Uh, suppose like uh, we have one Node.js application inside our Docker container. and okay. it got crashed in the production so how mm-hmm. we can restart that uh, node js application automatically we can uh, write a shell script to uh, to check the status of a container uh, at particular regular intervals and uh, when we uh, write that shell script so it will send a status 0 or 1 so on the basis of that particular status 0 or 1 if the status is 0 that means the container is stopped so we can ask the docker daemon or simply write the docker uh, uh, restart command or docker uh, compose command to restart the container so this is a manual effort we have to write a shell script uh, but no like facility. suppose yeah yeah but suppose like we when we are creating that container can we mm-hmm. do that at that time yes we can pass a uh, we can pass a uh, an attribute restart always Uh, but that will happen only when the host machine restarts suppose my uh, if i don't pass this value restart always and my host machine uh, uh, got shut down okay and if i again uh, start that particular host machine so my container will be stopped by default but if i uh, pass this attribute restart always while creating the container so what happens if i if my uh, host machine gets stopped and it gets restarted so my container will also get restarted but if you want to check uh, or if you want to restart container if the application inside the container uh, gets crashed so for that we have to write a shell script and on the output of that uh, on the basis of the output for that shell script we have to start or stop the container okay okay got it yeah ah <sighs> anyone else yeah hi divyam uh, i have a yes. question yeah sure uh, uh i am talking in context of the node app you created inside the docker right uh, suppose yes. we are uh, running a shell inside the uh, container okay mm-hmm. and we install some dependencies more mm-hmm. dependencies right and uh, uh, and after uh, the uh, when the container stopped working Right, mm-hmm. or we stop the container. Uh, if mm-hmm. we restart the container, uh, will these dependencies going to be there? That means no, no, no. No, if you install the uh, dependencies by going inside the container, so if the container restarts, those dependencies will be erased because uh, the container you are going to start uh, is you you are going to use the Docker file that you have mentioned. So it will take the package dot JSON. from that particular docker file not uh, it will not mention your it will not consider your dependencies which you have uh, installed by uh, installed manually by going inside the container so if you want to uh, if you want that container to uh, install that dependencies you have to mention uh, like uh, in, in in your particular host machine where you are pushing your code from so install it on your host machine then push to git and those dependencies must be inside the package.json file Oh okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, one more thing. Is uh, yes. there any other way to push the uh, these dependency directly from the uh, Docker to image? From Docker to image, I'm not getting a suppose, question. Su- suppose, suppose, uh, uh, like the previous case, we install dependency inside inside the shell, right? Now, is yes. there any way to uh, push these dependencies to the Docker image? No, no, no. Uh, directly, create. image, image uh, will always always be created, recreated. So if you de- uh, install some new new dependencies, 
so again you are going to uh, create the image for the uh, latest uh, changes so it will override the existing image okay 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 fine yeah. okay i guess that's it abhishek sir hey buddy is here at our session at some time thank you sir and people